Hi and welcome to the Auriga Astronomy uh, Educational Vodcast. We're here on YouTube providing videos about three to five minutes in length on various subjects to do with astronomy, history and the history of astronomy. Um, so please subscribe if you enjoy this video. Stay tuned. Uh, we're aiming to put up new vodcasts roughly about every five to ten days. So enjoy and pass the word around. Today we're going to look at constellations, how and why they were first drawn in Western astronomy. I am not an expert on the Chinese, I'm certainly not an expert on Indian, South American or North American uh, astronomy. But today we, in the Western world, in fact across the entire planet in terms of astronomy, we follow the Western astronomical tradition. Now, although there are markings on cave walls in Le Sceau in southern France, which we believe were created about 17,000 years ago, and possibly chart the Pleiades and the Hyades star clusters, um, they're not star maps. Uh, and they're not constellations. They're not named. And, but it, is, it shows an interest by the ancient people, Stone Age people, in, in the stars. In terms of proper constellations, we're looking at around the 5th century BCE. BCE means before common era, what used to be called BC. And you'll hear a lot of BCE and CE on these videos. On the 5th century BCE, the Babylonians, would have between the Euphrates, the Tigris River, and what's now uh, modern day Iraq, um, divided the ecliptic. Now the ecliptic is not the equator. The Earth, as you can see, tilts, and it tilts at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. This means the plane that it goes around the Sun, it orbits the Sun on, is not the same as the equator, and we call that plane the ecliptic. So the Babylonians separated the ecliptic into roughly 12 sections each section being approximately 30 days length, and they call this the zodiac, zodiac meaning zoo. This had nothing to do with fortune telling. It was to do with marking the passage of time. For these 12 constellations of the zodiac would become the 12, match the 12 months of the year. More importantly, it became the first predictive calendar. Now we think that they got this knowledge probably from Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Arcadian astronomers about a thousand years beforehand who started to map the skies. But the zodiac was definitely drawn uh, by the Babylonian astronomers in the way that we see it today. When we say it marks the passage of time, let me explain. Leo. When Leo appears in the eastern sky, just after sunset, it tells us that spring is on its way, because it rises mid to late February and early March. And Leo passages through the sky over the course of the spring, and it sets in the western sky at sunset, mid-June, and is replaced by Scorpius. Scorpius being traditionally the sign of summer, rising sort of mid to late June, setting uh, early September. This meant that farmers, seafarers, could predict where the seasons were going to occur and prepare for them, rather than the, oh, it's nice and warm today, it must be summer. They would know that it was what we call March. And this stayed from about 500 uh, BCE through to about 190 BCE when the Greeks obtained the star maps from the Babylonians. Now, how they did that, we're not sure, whether it was by conquest through Alexander the Great or whether it was just through trade. But that's for another uh, episode. So I hope you enjoyed today's little short snippet. This is what videos are going to be like on here. Uh, if you did, please subscribe. So if you need a mobile planetarium, you know who to look for. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.